It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 915, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send me the questions, and I answer them for you. Now, you may be wondering, why should I bother sending this guy a question? He calls himself Dr. Neil, but that's a nickname, right? Well, actually, it's not. I do have my Doctor of Public Health degree with an emphasis in chronic disease prevention and nutrition. I also have my Master of Public Health degree with an emphasis in health promotion and health education. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. And I would say the theme for every Friday Q&A episode is this. And this comes from a quote from Ray Dalio, who's made lots of money in the stock market. But more than that, I love what he says about listening to people. Here we go. Quote, listening to uninformed people is worse than having no answers at all. End quote. In my experience, patients and clients will often turn to family or friends for health advice. And that's not always listening to the most informed people. So my goal for every Friday Q&A, the reason this whole show exists, is to give you informed content. Because when I answer your questions especially, I like to pull from real research, not just my opinion. And I hope that you feel like I'm an informed person based on the credentials I shared with you. But I really want this to be a place where you can learn the truth, where we can bust through some of those health, nutrition, and fitness myths. So let's get to some truth and hear today's question as we optimize your life. I have had acid reflux for the last couple of years, and the doctor put me on Nexium, which controls it, but I've read and read how bad it is, and I'm trying to find a way to get off of it. I've tried the apple cider vinegar. I've done the um, enzymes. I've given up dairy. I've tried giving up meat, and uh, I'm still not able to really get off it, so I'm wondering if you have any ideas. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for your question. I'm sorry to hear that you've been dealing with acid reflux. I actually remember feeling disheartened by the news that a common pharmaceutical treatment, Nexium, may be causing more harm to people than good. I know that it has helped so many people feel better, and so it's unfortunate that it has some unintended and potentially serious side effects. So regarding your question, Linda, as I always do, let's start at the very beginning and talk about what acid reflux actually is and what the symptoms are. I like doing this because once we understand what this condition is all about, it can sometimes clue us in as to what treatments can be most effective. So acid reflux, this is sometimes referred to by its fancy medical name, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. So you might hear your doctor or other health professionals refer to this condition as GERD. Before I get into the mechanisms of GERD, Let me start by explaining what normally happens when we eat. So here's what's supposed to happen. We chew and swallow our food. This chewed food then travels down the esophagus, which is that tube that connects the mouth to the stomach. Now, at the bottom of the esophagus, just before the food actually enters the stomach, there's a one-way door that the food has to first pass through. Luckily for most of us, that door works just fine when it comes to letting food in. As soon as food has entered the stomach, the door closes behind it. Well, usually. It's super important that that door closes. This is because when food enters the stomach, the acid in our stomach starts to attack that food to break it down. Now, this is a very natural process and is important for proper digestion. So as soon as the food hits the stomach, that food starts to become more acidic. By having that door between the stomach and esophagus closed, It prevents that stomach acid and that acidic food from going back up the esophagus. Now, here's the problem. In some people, and for various reasons, that door doesn't always close properly after food has entered the stomach. Rather, it stays open or slightly open even. That means that some of the stomach acid and that acidic food can creep back up into the esophagus. This is why this condition is sometimes referred to as reflux or acid reflux. We can now understand where the word acid comes from, but what about this term reflux? Reflux is defined as the movement of fluid in an abnormal direction. So since partially digested food is moving up the esophagus as opposed to down it, 
this makes sense too. And when we think about the more formal, fancy medical term I mentioned before, gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, this term also makes sense now. Gastro in gastroesophageal refers to stomach. Esophageal means esophagus. And we now know what reflux means. So gastroesophageal reflux disease makes sense now. I should also mention that the stomach can handle a highly acidic environment. It's built for that. But the esophagus can't. So when acid enters the esophagus, it tends to cause some pain. Many describe that pain as a burning sensation. And since the location of the doorway that connects the esophagus to the stomach is located near the center of the body, right below the breastbone and sort of near the heart, this burning sensation is sometimes referred to as heartburn. Okay, so why does this happen? GERD can be caused by a variety of things. The first could be a hernia, or it can simply be due to the fact that the doorway between your esophagus and stomach doesn't close or latch properly because the muscles that close it are weak. Luckily, we do have some ideas for how to make it more likely that the door closes more often. Linda, you mentioned you have tried some different remedies to help relieve your symptoms. You mentioned apple cider vinegar, removing dairy from your diet, consuming less meat, and using digestive enzymes. When I looked at some of the studies examining the effects of these, here's what I found. When it comes to apple cider vinegar, it turns out that this doesn't seem to help with GERD. Rather, it may even make folks feel worse. So if you haven't already, go ahead and stop using this one and see if it starts to help relieve your symptoms at all. Regarding digestive enzymes, there don't appear to be any on the market that have been well studied at least to help relieve acid reflux. So save your money on that one too. When it comes to dairy, there doesn't seem to be a clear link between consuming dairy and worsening GERD symptoms. But if you find removing dairy from your diet helps, then keep it up. On the other hand, meat can aggravate acid reflux particularly if that meat is high in fat. So what should we do then? Well, we do know that there are some common culprits to worsening GERD symptoms, like high fat meats. But there are also some lifestyle related habits that I'll discuss. But let me start with the foods first. We have learned that some foods can weaken those muscles that help the door between the esophagus and stomach close. The foods that tend to weaken those muscles are, and I'm gonna apologize in advance for this one, chocolate, peppermint and black pepper, fried or high-fat foods, coffee, and alcohol. So it's best to limit your intakes of all of those ingredients. You may not need to completely avoid them, but at least cut back. From a lifestyle perspective, there are other things we can do. Carrying extra body weight and cigarette smoking can also aggravate acid reflux. So quitting smoking and losing some weight may help relieve some of the symptoms. But there are some other behaviors that can help as well. For example, Not lying down soon after eating can be beneficial. That's because lying down may make it more likely for that partially digested acidic food to creep back up into the esophagus. That's why many health professionals will recommend that the last thing consumed should be at least two to three hours before bedtime. Oh, and I should mention, some try to get around this by still eating close to bedtime and then propping themselves upright using pillows so that they're not lying down. This is not a good idea. I repeat, this is not a good idea. That's because using pillows to prop yourself up can actually put more pressure on the stomach, potentially pushing food back up the esophagus again. So back to eating habits. It's also recommended that small, more frequent meals are consumed each day as opposed to larger meals. This is because by not filling the stomach too much, we can prevent that food from going back up into the esophagus. I hope this information helps you feel better, Linda, and thank you so much for your question. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you want to be in the raffle, send me a question. Just come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. It's really easy and you can even play back your message and do retakes before sending it in. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in. The number is 61 I love ohd Both methods are in this episode's description, which you can find at oldpodcast.com. And I can't believe it, that's 915 episodes of Optimal Health Daily, and it's all thanks to you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your continued support. For those of you in the US, I hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend. We have a holiday on Monday, but I'll still see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits.